Hey, thank you for tuning in. This is West Watcher Brooks, and welcome to the Revelation Christian. I want to make sure I help you understand Bible prophecy, specifically in the book of Revelation, as it relates to our modern era. Because something so significant just happened with the, queen, the death of Queen Elizabeth. As I've been saying this to watch for for over 10 years, close to 10 years now, I've said to watch it, and it happened. So I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm excited, full of zeal. Uh, I've been burnt out for so long and needed to recoup and uncharge and decompress. But now I'm fired up. And I want to be able to show you the points of this and what, the, what to watch for next. Okay, so let's talk about the ninth king and what happens next, what we need to watch for. Okay, so let's jump into the PowerPoint here. So finally, after all these years, close to 10 years, the ninth king is here. The ninth king is here, folks. Yes, as I've been saying for so many times, for so, so, so long, and you can look at all my history, all the body of work I've been doing for close to 10 years now, saying over and over again, we need to watch for a new king in UK and Denmark. And I want to just not just say this, I want to show it to you, but I want you to see that we are living in a time where God is giving us new information. Remember how scripture talk about how knowledge will increase, but the thing is, so many people have such an allegiance to traditions, to institutional and formal training, scholars, uh, those with long titles behind their name, as if God cares about any of that. The only thing that God cares about, those he trusts with his message to deliver it. That's what God cares about. And the thing is that we find now, is just like in the time when Jesus walked the earth, is that Israel could not understand and did not understand that they had prophecy wrong as related to the Messiah and what he would do and how he would fulfill what the Old, Pro what Old Testament and prophecy says we could do. So when Jesus came into the picture and started fulfilling prophecy right before the eyes, poof, they just missed it. They didn't understand how prophecy, how he was correcting them right before their eyes. I mean, they killed the Lord. Right. Knowing that he fulfilled prophecy over and over and over and over again, right before that. But you see that those who were studying, those who were watching, knew that Jesus were coming there to correct them, saw that Jesus correct them. And they understood what prophecy meant when he corrected them. So we see now in our time, the Holy Spirit is correcting us, giving us new information, giving us a better understanding, better clarity. But you cannot expect that because the institutional or establishment prophecy experts say that there is nothing new you can learn because they said so you won't trust and follow the lord you're following the traditions of men because there is just like we saw in the scriptures that at the times the lord gives us new information to provide better clarity but you will find that the establishment will will push against that because it threatens their reputation it may threaten their ego it may threaten their pride who knows but you find that the Holy Spirit is correcting us. And I'm gonna show you, just as I've been saying for close to 10 years, that the Lord validated his teaching just recently with the death of Queen Elizabeth. So let's take a look. So as you can see here, since May 2013, I've been teaching the same lesson over and over and over and over again to watch for a new king in UK and watch for a new king in, in Denmark, which is basically a new king to sit on the throne to replace Queen Elizabeth and a new king to sit on the throne to replace Queen of Denmark, Queen Margaret of Denmark, as it relates to the prophecy in Revelation, the 10 horns that you see on the seven headed beast, or as it relates to Daniel's prophecy in chapter two, as it relates to the 10, ho 10 toes. So you have 10 toes, 10 horns, they correlate, they're the same thing, just seen differently or different perspective from God's vantage point. But the message is still the same, that we needed to watch for a new king in UK and Denmark. I said this in May 2013, again in September 2014, watch for a new king in UK and Denmark because you find that in April 2013, there was a new, ki new king uh, in the Netherlands. July 2013, there was a new king in Belgium. June 2014, there was a new king in Spain. So God, who is the one that dictates who's going to sit on thrones, who, God is the one who determines who rules lands. <clears throat> we found that God had put our, his focal point, or God has made it so that we should focus on the region of the earth where we see all these monarchs being replaced by kings. So as God point was driving a big old spotlight to Europe, we, as I was kept saying over and over again, reinforcing what I've been saying previously before this, is to watch for a new king in UK and Denmark as it relates to the next prophecy you need to watch for Revelation 17, 12. And then again, in 2015, I said, or did, made a trailer in which I was showing you all the signs you need to watch for. And the next prophecy you need to watch for is Revelation 17, 12, which is to watch for a new king in UK as it relates to the replacing the replacement of Queen Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth. Then I said again in 2016, we need to watch for Queen Elizabeth, whether she abdicates or die. There needs to be a man that sits on that throne. There needs to be a king. I said in 2016, 2017, I said, look guys, the ninth king is coming. It looks like it's getting really close. So we need to pay attention even closer to the, to the last two queens of Europe because prophecy says we need to watch for the next uh, prophecy to, for, to be fulfilled, which is Revelation 17, 12. And again, in 2017, these are the top, these are the signs of the times you need to watch for, which is the, the 10 horns, uh, which is the 10 kings. And again, there's 10 royal families in Europe, but I said we need to watch for a new king in UK and in Denmark. 2017, 2019, the next prophecy we need to watch for is a new king in UK and Denmark. Over and over and over again, I've been saying this. And then again, in 2020, next prophecy you need to watch for as a new king in UK and Denmark. And then again, I said, hey, 2021, they now the leaked plans of Queen Elizabeth who may die, leaked plans, which was Operation London's, London Bridge, which would go about how to, what to do when she dies. So that was even closer to showing us that, hey, there might be a new king that's gonna come so quickly. So you can see that this is what I've been showing for close to 10 years over and over again, explaining to you that we need to watch for a new king in UK and Denmark as it relates to the 10 horns, 10 toes, prophecy of the book of Revelation in Daniel. This also would tell us that we are living in the pages of the book of Revelation and that it gives us a greater understanding of what the Lord is trying to teach us and show us. And that is these are the signs of the times. And this is what the Lord wants us to watch for because Jesus tells us to watch. Luke 12, verse 37, blessed are those who watch. Then we find in Revelation 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 3, if you don't watch, then I will come to you as a thief. This is what Jesus says. So he tells us to watch. He tells us to watch. Now, what you're going to find here, and I'm going to explain to you, is how this all ties in, what to, what to expect, and how does this even relate. If this is your first time hearing this, I'm going to show you. All right, here we go. So we see that the book of Revelation, it talks about in the last days there's be a religious institution that's going to have that's going to influence the whole world and John sees his image represented by a woman who's a prostitute sitting on the beast with seven heads and ten horns she has red purple golden cup with filled with the blood of martyrs and she's adorned with gold precious stones and pearls so we find that in the same thing we see in Daniel in the last days that there's also a, a statue mixed that has a head of gold chest of silver waist of bronze, feet of iron, and legs of iron, and feet of iron and clay. And a stone comes from heaven and knocks this whole statue down at the feet. So a stone hits the feet and then that stone becomes a mountain, which is the kingdom of God on earth. But you see the last days is the representation of these kingdoms here uh, mixed with iron and clay. But if you look closely, you'll find that there's a correlation because Revelation 17 talks about there's 10 kings. So we find that there's 10 horns in Revelation, in Daniel, there's 10 toes, and we find there's 10 kings. So we're all talking about the same thing, just different perspectives. This is no different when God talks about how Jesus is a lamb, but he's not talking about a four-legged creature. He's talking about he's a sacrifice for the sins of the world. So we see that there's metaphors and there's analogies and there's all these different types of symbolism that God used talking about the same thing. Maybe a vantage point from above, maybe a vantage point from below, but you see there is consistency, consistency and continuity to what the Lord is telling us. So now when we go and see these images from Daniel or Revelation, you see 10 toes, 10 horns, 10 kings, it's the same thing, just different perspectives of the same subject. So now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna look at this. In Revelation 17, 12 says the 10 horses are, what you saw are 10 kings. So we see that the 10 toes in mentioned in Daniel, which also says are 10 kings, are talking also talking about the same thing in the end times of Revelation, talking about 10 kings. And when we go into look at the world, when we see Daniel's statue of the head of gold, silver, chest, waist of bronze, legs of iron, and feet of iron and clay, we find that the feet is where the stone that's cut from without human hands that comes from heaven and knocks this whole statue down to the feet is this is the era of time where time ends. This is the era of time where Jesus will rule the earth at the era of the feet. The stone doesn't go to the head, dress, waist, legs, it goes to the feet. And folks, we are not living in a Babylonian kingdom. Persian kingdom, Greek kingdom, Roman kingdom. We are not living in these times. This is, this is not for us anymore. We are here and there's nothing after it. There's nothing after the feet. So if you look here, you find that since the Lord has been directing our attention to Europe with those mon these monarchs, we find that the, the Roman empire, the legs, which was split between East and West, 
is right here, which is represented by our modern era, which is Europe and the Middle East or West Africa, West Africa, North Asia. So we see that this right here, which once represented the Roman Empire, which is the Eastern Western Roman Empire, East West Roman Empire, legs left, right, left, right, iron two legs, left, right, East, West. Now in our modern era is what we call Europe or in North Africa or West Asia, the Middle East. So when you look at the map and you're like, well, I don't know if this 10 Kings relates to Europe. Well, look, there's no monarchs in Canada, no monarchs in the U.S., no monarchs in uh, Mexico, no monarchs in South America, no monarchs in Australia, but five over in Asia, seven in the Middle East, three in Africa. And whoa, look, behold, there are seven, I mean, there are 10 monarchs in Europe. So if we see that there's 10 monarchs in Europe and we saw that there were 10 of the, of the 10 monarchs in Europe, two are queens, Queen Margaret and the deceased Queen Elizabeth, we could find that we're actually talking about Europe as it relates to the 10 royal families of the 10 toes or the 10, 10 kings or the 10 horns represented by in the book of Revelation. So that's why I said we needed to watch the Queen of Queen of the Netherlands when she abdicated. We need to watch King of Belgium when he abdicated. We need to watch King of Spain when he abdicated because these two were the last two remaining of the 10 royal families. God was putting a big old spotlight to look at Europe because these were the next ones coming. And as it relates to those next ones, I said we need to again watch for a new king in the UK and Denmark because they're the long, longest living reigning monarchs in history because after the king of uh, Thailand passed away these two again were the most the longest living reigning ruling monarchs ever and so we find that God is going to make this so such a big deal because they're this is going to be a historic event when they pass their crown to the next person and so that's why God is focused drove, drove the focal point to Europe but as I said and what we saw recently now with the deceased with Queen Elizabeth passing away there's now a ninth king. The ninth king is here. And the only thing we need to wait for now is Queen, of the, Queen Margaret of Denmark to be replaced by a king. So this is what I was trying to explain to you folks. You see that, that we are living in the times of the book of Revelation, chapter 17 to be exact. And the next prophecy we need to watch for is Revelation 17, 12. And as you can see that with Revelation 17, 12, of the 10 kings, of the 10 royal families in Europe, nine are now kings, one is remaining, Queen Margaret of Denmark. So you can see for close to 10 years I've been saying this, the Lord validated his teaching. This was not my teaching. This is the Lord's teaching by discernment and by watching as he says to watch and giving me underst understanding and discernment through wisdom, I was able to show and share what I learned from the Holy Spirit, share with you, and it came to pass. Again, this is now the second time a prophecy I said to watch for that has come to pass. So you can see now I've been, I've been validated twice based on the teaching of the Lord and trying to discern what the scripture says and watch as the Lord says to watch. And he corrected me like I hope he's correcting many of you. And you should share this to so many other Christians so they can be corrected. But I hope that you finally can see that the ninth king is here. One more is remaining. It's an exciting time because guess what, folks? Jesus is coming. I really hope you liked this video. Give me a like. Give me a comment. Subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are. Hopefully this edified you, comforts you, and you now can exhort the Lord with some good news because Jesus is coming. Thanks, folks. Take care.